Threats, conspiracy theories, and a lot of contingency plans. That's what's on the mind of state election officials right now. Investigative reporter Ryan Ray shows us what's being done to fight misinformation and convince voters of a safe and secure election. Ryan. Yeah, guys, this is now commonplace every major election cycle. Maybe it's a viral video that is misconstrued, a meme based on a lie, or just human error. Much of it is already happening. Stacks of boxes full of completed ballots just sitting there, unattended, for eight minutes. This picture sparked outrage from all sides. This should never, ever happen. It is not up to our standards and it's not acceptable. Election officials reviewed surveillance video at Edina City Hall, confirmed nobody ever touched the absentee ballots, and fired the courier. But this episode renewed concerns about election integrity. An issue now front and center this election cycle. All of these ballots should be accorded that same degree of security and protection. Each county is responsible for safeguarding ballots, but election officials point out there is no law or rule that says election judges have to accompany absentee ballots in transit, no matter what you may read on social media. We interviewed Secretary of State Steve Simon before this issue came up in Edina. I have two wishes for this election cycle, two. I want to see high turnout, and low drama. But last month, this ballot arrived in the mailbox of registered voters in Faribault County containing a critical error. The candidates for state rep in District 23A showed them with the wrong party. Peggy Bennett is actually a Republican and Joe Stalick a Democrat. This does not help uh, voter integrity. It doesn't help voter confidence at all. The reaction online was loud and swift. One person even writing that someone needs to go to prison for this. What simply happened was some human errors. The truth is the Secretary of State's office has nothing to do with the design, printing, or typos that may occur on ballots. Each county handles its own. Fairbo apologized, corrected the mistake, printed new ballots, and gave the 50 people who already voted a chance for a do-over. How often do errors like that happen in an election? Not often. There are usually a handful every cycle consistent with what we've seen this cycle. So this isn't new. Almost every cycle we have four or six or eight errors throughout the state. These are examples of how errors can trigger a wave of doubt and opens the door to conspiracy theories now often fueled by content created by artificial intelligence. All of it has real consequences for this election cycle. Five investigates reached out to 20 election officials across the state. Five of the biggest counties in the metro tell us poll workers are concerned about their safety. Now a new state law makes it illegal to intimidate those workers or interfere in an election. And the legislature really did step up last year on a bipartisan basis in tightening our laws and, and uh, uh, providing some new penalties and tools to get at real disruptors. In Georgia, ABC News recently got an up-close look at how poll workers there are now being trained. Can I vote now? This role-playing exercise is designed to prepare them for what they may encounter. Back at home, multiple counties tell us they now train workers on de-escalation techniques. That's something we didn't use to focus on. I wish our world were such that we didn't have to do that, but we do. Jenny Gelms is the head of elections for Hennepin County. Our focus on making sure that election judges, poll workers, our seasonal staff are equipped to handle that kind of increased threat um, environment. That is relatively new. The latest conspiracy here happened during the recent primary when Congresswoman Ilhan Omar narrowly beat her opponent Don Samuels. Right now Omar with a slight lead over Don Samuels. Of that night the results trickled in and seemed to stall at 10 percent. Omar wins easily this time. A different. Then late in the evening, they updated all at once. And it didn't take long for the conspiracies, some describing it as mysterious and implying someone cheated. But Gelm says there's actually a reasonable explanation. What it means is that we're taking the time to make sure that the numbers are right. There's now a new state law that gives mail-in voters the chance to drop off ballots up until 8 o'clock on Election Day, the same time polls close. The deadline used to be 3 o'clock. 
All absentee ballots are run at the same time, and many must be driven in from the suburbs. We want people to be aware that if they're, if, if it's a little bit later than what you're used to, it doesn't mean there's something wrong. It just means that a lot of people voted and we're processing all those ballots. Should we start with the sequence ballot? In Minnesota, each county counts their ballots using machines like this one and then send off the results to the state using a secure channel. Right in seven, over votes one. Every machine is required to be tested in a public setting. This is an opportunity for the public to come and view the accuracy of our voting equipment. We attended this one earlier this month in Hennepin County and again in Anoka. Officials basically try to trick the machines. Only those that perform perfectly are allowed for use. Transparency and openness is the best sort of disinfected. And so what I say to folks all over Minnesota all the time, not just this year, but always is, come on in, the water's warm. There is a tricky balance on election day when it comes to the presence of police officers at polls. Officials want voters to feel safe, but not intimidated. We are told each county is working very closely with law enforcement, Lindsay. Well, Ryan, back to that situation in Edina. Uh, this did happen. It got a lot of attention and also a lot of back and forth. Yeah, Lindsay, everyone agrees that uh, that was a mistake and those ballots should have never been left unattended. But again, election officials say there is no law that requires two judges to accompany absentee ballots. Republicans argued Steve Simon needs to change his view of that law, but it remains to be seen if this will come up at the legislature. Kevin. Well, that's good information there. That's Ryan Race. Thank you. And to learn more about all the candidates, see what is on your specific ballot, and to find out where to vote, check out our election guide. Find it anytime on the free KSTP mobile app and, of course, at KSTP.com.